You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. Our politics has become so mean, so petty, so negative, so partisan, so angry. Our lawmakers lead them away from rivalries, irrelevancies, and trivialities to a unity of idealism, purpose, and faith. Hello and welcome to the American Electorate Podcast, your weekly home for a nonpartisan breakdown of the news and discussions regarding political philosophy, culture, and the political process. I'm your host, Gregory Anderson Jr. Thank you so much for joining me for this first episode of my podcast, whether you're listening to this right after it came out or down the road after the show's become really successful. I am grateful that you are here. In this first episode, I don't have a ton to go over. First, I would like to talk about how exactly the podcast got started and the rest of the show, I'll explain the basics of the formatting and the purpose, the true purpose of the podcast. So in 2011, that's when I discovered Dan Carlin's Hardcore History podcast. And I had already been somewhat of a fan of history. And if you like history, please go check out this podcast. It's absolutely amazing. You'll, you'll learn a lot. Just I'm just going to warn you, if you happen to like it, <laughs> just be prepared to get like one new episode a year. Well, um, Dan Carlin, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, and who I was fortunate enough to meet at a conference in California, he also does, well, did, a podcast called Common Sense. And especially right when I was getting into politics full time, this became my go-to political show. It, it, it's fun, it's intelligent, and it's really, it's really, as his old tagline says, it's the, it's the independent alternative to the partisan voices that you normally hear. And this was really when podcasting was starting to take off. You really didn't have too many other independent uh, podcasts out there. Now, now there's several of them, and they're all over YouTube, and that's great. This podcast was one of the few podcasts that inspired me to start podcasting in general. But there was this one episode that inspired the birth of this show. And the episode was titled Upgrading the Electorate. He talked about a variety of things, and I don't want to ruin the episode for you because I will link it to you, but I do believe it's behind a paywall. But the main question he asked was, is it possible to upgrade the electorate? He also talks about a really difficult issue, and that's the informed level of the electorate, which I do understand is a touchy topic for some people. Decades since the 60s, when everyone gained the right to vote, we developed this notion that everyone needs to fulfill their civic duty and vote regardless of what you know, which Given the voting rights history in America, I suppose makes some sense. I mean, it wasn't until 1856 till the last state got rid of the property requirement. Women didn't get the right to vote until 1920 until the 19th Amendment was ratified. Hell, Native Americans had to wait till 1924 for the right to vote, which I, I of course, chose 1924 because they were, of course, given the right to vote in 1887, provided, of course, they dissociated with their tribe, which, so we're not going to count that. And, of course, the elephant in the room, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, fully given black Americans and other racial minorities the right to vote. My point for bringing all that up is, of course, classism, sexism, and racism was used in order to deny people the right to the vote, and that itself is undeniable. Unfortunately, what it also did was convince the country that we should never pursue any type of minimal standard, and that, I believe, is a problem. It's been said by a lot of people in many different ways, that a well-informed electorate is a prerequisite for an effective democracy. And even though, I'm well aware that even though there is no consistent definition of what it means to be informed, we all sort of tacitly agree that Americans simply do not know enough. Now, for the record, I feel the, <laughs> I feel, I desperately feel the need to get this out of the way. I'm not for laws barring people from voting based on what they know, nor would I ever be. I mean, given the nature of what I want to talk about on this podcast, I almost am required to bring it up. And I have heard some interesting arguments on the other side, and I'm, of course, going to bring those up. But I would never be for a law actually barring people from voting based on what they know. What I would like to do is to help define and create an objective standard that the average voter should be able to live up to. And that's one of the goals of this podcast is creating more of a conversation around this crucial topic. You know, a lot of people, especially when they look 
at issues with the country. Um, a lot of people seem to think that things would just get better if we could simply get better people. And I, I know a lot of people were frustrated with the choices in 2016. And after watching last week's debates, our 2020 choices aren't looking that much better. <laughs> I personally believe that one of our main problems is with the election slash uh, campaign process. It, it seems that each year that this process continues without fail to churn out poor choices that most people aren't happy with, which is why most people in the end end up voting for the lesser evil. Now, the next obvious question to ask is why? Is this partially or solely because we continue to get poor candidates? Do we just really have bad luck? Or do the voters have anything to do with it? And, 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 and the thing is, I'm not talking about voter participation as in the amount of people who decide to vote. What I mean is, have we created a bad set of incentives that in turn promotes bad behaviors from politicians that result in us getting the same type of candidates year after year? You know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have all the answers, nor what I ever claim to. So it's hard for me to not only break down the process, but to pinpoint it down to just one thing. I, I mean, I wish, I honestly wish I could sit here and say that, man, if we could just fix our debates so that we can get more parties up there, so that we have more legitimate options, or that, or when we do get more candidates up there, that their mics actually work. MSNBC, I'm talking to you. Hell, you know what? I would actually settle for an actual debate. Like an actual debate and not what we have now is where it's essentially a glorified press conference. But there's no guarantee that even that would help. But what I do know is that we've been heading down the wrong direction for, for quite some time. And I don't know yet. I haven't spoken to you yet, so I don't know which side of the aisle that you're on. But if you're interested in making progress on any of these longstanding systemic issues, we have to start with fixing the foundation. And that foundation is us. And one of the things that makes this so exciting to me is that this is something that this is a discussion that we can start today. There's no middlemen. There's no laws that we have to deal with. We can start this discussion today. We can start talking about what it means to be informed and what the average voter should be expected to know. And we can talk about how to improve our discourse. I mean, we are right now more divided than ever. But one of the things I can safely say is that we all benefit from an informed electorate. So that's the ML of this podcast. So each week in the second half of the show, which will be titled the subject of the week, we'll talk about issues along these lines, including and not limited to like ways to keep up with the news or tips on debates and tactics. We're discussing politics all the time, so it's always good to be prepared. But that's not all. I mean, the issues I will talk about will cover a fair amount of ground. That's why. In the opening, it says discussions regarding political philosophy, culture, and the political process. So that's the second half of the show. Now, the first half of the show will be a nonpartisan breakdown of the news. And this will be slightly different, I guess, from what you're used to. What I'll do is I'll gather the facts from anywhere from two to eight stories, depending on what's happening on the news, from sites from all over the political spectrum. And I'll compile those into what will be the story summary. And after that, I'll explain how each of the sources, if it's necessary... Um, how they chose to cover the story. So essentially, I want to filter out the spin so that way you can make your opinion based off the facts while still making you aware of the narratives that are out there. Uh, so this podcast will be released every Wednesday about 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, this show potentially will move to a seasonal format. That's actually why it came out in July. Um, I'm That's still up for debate, though, so I will let you know far in advance if I ever go down that road. Each show will last between 35 to 45 minutes an episode. I chose the time frame mainly because we know at times there either may not be a sufficient amount of news or possibly too much to go over, and I don't want to leave certain things out if I can avoid it. Well... This is the end of the American Electorate Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to reach me for any reason at all, you can do so at politicpodcast at gmail.com. That is politicpodcast at gmail.com. I am also on Instagram, my Instagram.com forward slash official Gregory Anderson. Also, the last plug, <laughs> I'm on Twitter. I'm trying to be just a bit more active. And not sure how that's working out, but we'll we'll get it together. Uh, it's at Greg B. Anderson Jr. Because every other one that I wanted was taken. But th again, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure having you listen to me talk about something that I love. I'll see you next week, my friends. <laughs>